welcome everybody to our annual general meeting 2020. Yeah, we can clap for that. Um, thank you all for being here. My name is Kristen Blakely and I am the chair of the foundation's board of directors. But I am actually only chair for about 10 more minutes. <laughs> With that, I would like my the next chair, Angela, to stand up and just have a wave. Just say hi. <laughs> so if you need anything in 11 minutes, Angela, I'm officially retiring from this role. <laughs> Um, but it, you actually never can leave the foundation. We have seen this over and over again. It is the vortex of the Canadian Women's Foundation. And that's why we have so many friends and so many folks that love us and keep coming back. And so thank you to all of you who are here. I would like to start with, oh, uh, wow. Yes, very powerful. I would like to start this evening by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the New Credit. This territory is part of the Dish With One Spoon Treaty, an agreement between the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. This territory is also covered by the Upper Canada Treaties. Today, Toronto is still home to Indigenous people, and we are grateful for the opportunity to meet and work on this territory. However, we recognize that land acknowledgements are not enough. We need to pursue truth, reconciliation, decolonization, and allyship in an ongoing effort to make right with all our relations. If you're interested in learning more about the Foundation's ongoing efforts to pursue truth and reconciliation, I encourage you to visit the About section of our website. CanadianWomen.org. In a few minutes, you'll hear about the exciting projects the Canadian Women's Foundation has been working on this year from President and CEO Paulette Sr. <laughs> but first, I'd love for all of you who are here today to take a moment to reflect on your why when it comes to gender equality. Next slide. <laughs> this is a team effort. So why are you committed to the foundation, this cause, and to empowering women and girls? Why are you committed to the fight for gender equality? We all bring diverse lived experiences and have all overcome different barriers in our lives to be a part of this journey. So it's important to reconnect to our whys because although there has been progress, many of the barriers and gendered experiences encountered by the women in this room this evening remain. When I look out at the faces in my university courses on gender and diversity, I am reminded of the promise and power that a new generation is bringing to the fight for gender equality. Full of hope and energy, my students help keep my optimism flame burning. Because oftentimes I feel disheartened, disillusioned, and so fed up when confronted with the data on inequality or reading firsthand accounts of stories of workplace harassment, domestic abuse, sexual assault, and gender violence. I know that many of you also feel that progress is just not happening fast enough. A hundred years to end the wage gap or the gender leadership gap or make even a dent in the countless unfounded case it feels daunting for sure. Advancing gender and equality in Canada, or advancing gender equality in Canada remains critical and urgent. And we are not there yet. We are not there yet because every six days a woman in Canada is killed by her intimate partner. And Indigenous women are killed at six times the rate of non-Indigenous women. We are not there yet because one in three single mothers are raising their children in poverty and the gender pay gap continues to compromise all women's financial security throughout the duration of their careers. We are not there, back, we are not there because only 14% of girls in grade 10 say they feel confident, and girls are experiencing more stress and mental health issues than their boy counterparts. 
we are not there yet because only 4% of CEOs and less than 30% of Canadian MPs are women. And on the top 100 highest paid CEOs in Canada, anyone want to take a guess at how many are women? Three. One. It's one. She's number six. We still have so far to go, so much to do. Many of you have been committed to this cause for a long time. So it's understandable that you may be tired of raising your voices, tired of working on the front lines, fundraising, advocacy, advocating, and seeing the same stories in the headlines. I get the tired thing, believe me. I told you I have three kids. <laughs> but I'm joining the foundation and taking my tiredness to a whole new level and embracing the tireless call to action. I am so inspired and energized by the foundation's new tireless campaign, which launched at the end of October 2019. Tireless is a multimedia initiative to rally everyone around gender equality. It centers on the tireless individuals and groups who are advancing the move toward gender equality in Canada. These are the very people and groups the foundation partners with, bolsters and supports every day. The campaign is designed to show everyday people how they can join the tireless and support the movement themselves by donating, participating in advocacy, keeping in touch by email or hosting an event. Being tireless doesn't mean we don't get tired. It means we help each other continue on. And knowing that one voice is strong, that the power of thousands or millions is stronger. When you support the Canadian Women's Foundation, you are one of the tireless and you are not alone. There are people like you taking actions to better the lives of women and girls all over the country. As part of today's presentation, we're gonna show you the tireless video that the foundation has created. It captures the spirit of this movement that connects us all. Thank you all for remaining committed to the tireless work that must continue to advance gender equality in Canada. Now, please join me in welcoming the tireless Paulette Senior, President and CEO of the Canadian Women's Thank you, Kristen, and hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our annual general meeting for 2020. And before I get started, similarly to Kristen, who introduced her incoming replacement, I want to introduce Beverly Weibrow. Um, so if you don't know Beverly Weibrow, you should, because <laughs> I think uh, we're standing here and having this particular moment now because of Beverly Weibrow, the founding, long-standing, tireless, <laughs> and former CEO uh, for over 20 years of the Canadian Women's Foundation. So you want to stand into the way. So it is fantastic to have all of you here with us for a look at what we've done over the past uh, year and the highlights and uh, a look forward to where we're going in this new decade. Your support and commitment to the foundation makes it possible for us to change lives, uh, to strengthen organizations that serve women and girls and to advocate for gender equality. I'm happy to have the opportunity to express our gratitude today because we can't do this work without all of you. On this slide, you can see, <laughs> uh, not yet, nope. you can see, uh, the cover of our freshly printed annual report, hot off the press, and uh, we'll walk through some of the highlights that it features. I'd like to get started by talking about the impact of your support on the lives of women and girls throughout Canada. When you support the foundation, you enable community programs across the country that empower women and girls against the critical challenges they face. Gender-based violence, poverty and the wage gap, negative stereotypes and media imagery, and underrepresentation in leadership. We see the impact of this much needed work in many different ways. 
Let's see if I can do it myself. No, I can't. So you have to go. <laughs> so next slide. So thanks for your generosity over. Thanks for your generosity over the past fiscal year. The foundation. <laughs> Why don't you just go back again? The foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And what I'm saying is that the foundation has funded 75 programs throughout Canada. 26 of the programs were funded. We funded uh, served remote communities. 29 primarily served Face Nations, Métis and Inuit communities. What does this mean in terms of impact on people? Thanks to your generosity, more than 9,000 lives were impacted by the programs and services funded in the last fiscal year. When you support the foundation, you support programs that focus on addressing the root causes of the most critical issues and helping women and girls who face the greatest barriers. Next slide. Okay. I think we got it now. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, these programs serve women and girls throughout the country. One of our key areas of focus, <laughs> the staff at the back are laughing. One of our key areas of focus is gender-based violence. Women and girls continue to face unacceptable levels of violence and abuse, including intimate partner violence, sexual harassment, assault, and exploitation. Like you, we want all women in Canada to live free from violence. Your support helps us to fund programs that empower women to rebuild their lives after abuse, that help the next generation of teens learn how to create healthy relationships. This year's annual report highlights the Aspire program at Anderson House, a shelter for women and children in Prince Edward Island. So can I see a shout out for Prince Edward Island? Very <laughs> Nicole is from PEI. <laughs> so this program, which received funding from the Foundation Health the Shelter, go beyond offering beds and meals. It enables staff to help clients develop personalized plans for their next steps out of the shelter. Next slide. One of the factors that put women at risk of abusive relationships is poverty. More than 1.9 million women in Canada are living on a low income. And one in three single moms are raising their children in poverty. Like you, we want every woman in Canada who's living on a low income to have the chance to move herself and her children out of poverty. Your support helps us to fund programs that offer women work experience or teach skills, trades, technology, or how to start a business. The Entrepreneurs Program is one example. It focuses on indigenous businesses that strengthen northern ways of life and helps entrepreneurs from remote communities overcome barriers to business growth. Girls in Canada continue to grow up in a world of limiting stereotypes, and negative media messaging. Like you, we want all girls to believe in themselves, dream big, and pursue their goals. Your support helps us to fund programs that offer girls and those who identify as girls the opportunity to explore science and technology, physical activity, critical thinking, and leadership in a supportive and empowering environment. The Diva Girls Media Group uh, in Toronto is one example of the girls program we fund where girls learn media literacy and how to see beyond gender stereotypes. They become creators of radio and video productions that they share with their community. Girls learn that if the media doesn't reflect them, they can make their own. We need more women and girls leading in schools, communities, and workplaces. Circles of care, circles of courage in Duncan, British Columbia is one of the programs we support where girls can practice and apply leadership skills. Your support means that across all of our funded programs, women and girls can learn about many ways to lead. There's no one right way. You, are, you also enable women and girls to connect with mentors and to become mentors and role models themselves. The foundation's approach to leadership is central to our role in, in, uh, in an exciting national initiative, the Gender Equality Network Canada, also known as Gen C. To push for systemic gender equality, 
we need an inclusive strategy. That is the focus of Dead Sea, a multi-year project that is convened by the foundation and funded by the Department of Women and Gender Equality, WAGE. Gen C brings together 150 or so women leaders from more than 130 organizations across Canada to advocate for policy change, build intersectional leadership, and take collective action. Over the five strategic meetings, leaders have developed policy recommendations on issues like childcare, housing, and gender-based violence, to name a few. At the final meeting in November of last year, Gen C recommended the launch of broad national consultations on their ambitious strategic directions to advance systemic gender equality. We look forward to seeing where this work goes and we'll continue to push decision makers to prioritize the issues facing women and girls. Advocacy is one of the key priorities in the foundation's strategic plan. I didn't need to do that. <laughs> and we've been working hard to be more vocal and visible on the issues. Partnerships with other initiatives and organizations play a key role in this advocacy. I'll share an example of how one of our partnerships has evolved into an innovative project that will help to prevent sexual harassment. So, you got it? Next slide. Got it. We're collaborating with After Me Too, an initiative that addresses workplace sexual violence and the Aboriginal People's Network, Television Network, APTN to launch an online platform called Rosa. Set to launch in 2020, Rosa will centralize tools, information, and resources, as well as house training programs on sexual harassment prevention and intervention for employees and employers. It is supported by Employment and Social Development Canada, Department of Justice, and donors just like you. My colleague Anna Rada is going to tell you more about some of our advocacy and capacity building projects in a few minutes. But I also want to note that successful advocacy isn't just about us, it's about you too. We've also been calling on you, our supporters, to be more vocal, visible, by asking you to sign letters to your government representatives on key policy issues. One of those issues is urging for mandatory education on sexual assault for judges. I'm happy to say that more than 4,600 online letters were sent over the past year. When it comes to systemic change, it's important that we raise our voices together. And that's really central to the spirit of the tireless campaign. To advance gender equality, we have to keep pushing forward and supporting each other along the way. I think the tireless video captures it well, so let's, in a moment, take a look and watch it. But for those who are tuning in online, we sent you the link so that you can watch it, because if you watch it along with us here, it, will, it won't play uh, to its utmost. So let's, um, let's play the video. <laughs> Band together, fought for something, and made history many times. We got this far because together we are tireless. Tireless doesn't mean we don't get tired. It means we help each other continue on. And knowing one voice is strong. But the power of thousands or millions is stronger. Tireless takes a stand together. And we won't rest until all of Canada is with us. We are the tireless. And together, we will achieve gender equality. So that's our tireless campaign video. that represents the vision of gender equality that we are fighting for. So uh, in your spare time, do take a moment, go on our website, canadianwoman.org, and view it probably with better speakers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, take, a, take a look and share it, share it wide. So I hope that resonated with you. Watching that video gives me, every time I see it, it gives me a boost of energy and pride. 
So that's what we'll need going into the future of this important work. The baton is in our hands and it's up to us to move it forward and pass it to the next generation and ultimately to help get it across the finish line. Thank you all for choosing to be part of the journey rather than sitting on the sidelines. So I'd like to, in a moment, <laughs> I'd like to leave you with one last message, which is that, oh, not that one, no. yeah. <laughs> which is that part of being tireless is maintaining a good sense of humor. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. yes. So I encourage you to join us on March 5th for our exchange fundraiser featuring comedian and late night host, Samantha B. This is a rare opportunity to have lunch and laugh with this Canadian born comedian and hear her hilarious yet insightful and witty and just amazing way uh, uh, that she talks about gender equality. Now is the time to spread the word, invite friends, partners, colleagues, mothers and daughters and get ready to be inspired. Thank you all for being here today and now I'm going to hand it over to Anu, Anu Raja Jagal. She is the Foundation Senior Director of Community Initiatives and Policy and she's going to tell you about some of the major projects on her agenda. So please welcome Anu. very much. Um, I do have a little bit of a scratchy throat, so um, excuse me if uh, I hope everyone can hear, so just wave if you can't. Um, thank you very much, Paulette. Hello, everyone. Um, it's lovely to be here tonight. Um, I'm very excited to tell you about two major projects that we're working on that are really a result of a lot of our government relations and advocacy work that we've been doing for the last two years. Um, they'll greatly expand our reach across Canada, allowing the Foundation and you, our donors and supporters, to better address the diverse barriers facing women and girls. As Paulette mentioned, the foundation already supports skill training programs, empowering women living on low income. We see the incredible impact of these programs on their families, on their lives, on their communities. Yet in Canada, there are many steep obstacles to women's financial security, a lack of accessible childcare, gender discrimination in the pay gap, as well as a disproportionate amount of caregiving, unpaid caregiving and housework that falls to women. Based on the Foundation's experience of funding economic development, we know there's an urgent need to serve more women. We know that for women to thrive, they need greater access to jobs that are flexible, secure and well paid. And in passing, we are only currently able to fund 10 to 15 percent of the programs that make applications to us. So one of our new projects offers an amazing opportunity for the foundation to address women's poverty. It enables the foundation to support women's economic stability through the development of social purpose enterprises and access to social finance. The enterprises generate profits that go back into programs in the case of uh, organizations that are running them or back into communities in the case of women who are running on, um, uh, enterprises. We believe that promoting entrepreneurship and innovation as well as the growth of micro, small and medium sized enterprises is a powerful investment in women's economic prosperity. We are able to work on this project because we received over $3 million over two years from Employment and Social Development Canada to boost women's sector readiness to participate in the social enterprise initiatives and in social finance, a fund that will be launched by the Government of Canada this year. We are lucky to be amongst one of several partners, including Community Foundations of Canada, the National Aboriginal Capital Corporations Association and the McConnell Foundation. We're very excited to be able to put a gender lens on our share of the funding and contribute to learning about what works and increasing the diversity of organizations in, engaged in social finance and social entrepreneurship. We've completed and approved the first round of grants. There will be 12 amazing projects um, that we will help get started. Um, and these groups will have a chance to do activities that will move them closer to being ready for social finance. They have the potential to create lasting change and in women's lives and in organizations. For example, this funding will allow one organization to create a food-based social enterprise for its clients who are women who face many barriers to employment. 
the organization will conduct a feasibility study and do a business development plan in order to pursue the most viable approach to starting this enterprise. We'll be accepting two more rounds of grant applications and we look forward to sharing with you the full roster and the outcomes as they develop. We have also part of an exciting um, partnership with um, WAGE um, Women and Gender Equality. This is the second big project that we got underway in June 2019, um, at, actually at the Women Deliver event in uh, Vancouver. Um, WAGE announced um, that they would uh, commit to matching $10 million in funds raised by the foundation. So I just want to note that that is an opportunity for us to double our income, but this is matching money. It is an opportunity for us to leverage your donations and the kinds of funding that we'll be able to make in the next six years. The goal of this project called Time for Five is to address both gender-based violence and women's economic security in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, number five, which is to advance gender equality to empower all women and girls. The new funds will advance initiatives in rural, remote, and northern areas, as well as fuel initiatives to address emerging issues affecting women all over Canada. It's a step toward long-term sustainable funding to accelerate progress. We've made a commitment to reach communities where both economic conditions and violence against women manifest in different ways and need localized, specialized, community-based um, solutions. For example, rural communities may be places where women and girls are facing additional obstacles to accessing help. There are issues including social isolation, longer travel times to services, transportation difficulties, a lack of service providers and resources, as well as concerns about being able to access services confidentially in small communities. In rural and remote communities, there are also specific barriers to employment and to economic development. Smaller communities tend to have fewer employers and limited job opportunities. They are also more susceptible to economic downturn and population decline, as well as losses of key businesses and services. So along with increased supports for women and girls, Time for Five aims to build the strength of local community service providers to do the work and address systemic change. These organizations are already struggling to cover very large ge geographic distances and support women who can't come to central hubs for services. They do not have the capacity to focus on long-term plans that address the overall community gaps. So as a national organization, the foundation can help address the bigger picture, as well as provide opportunities for community knowledge sharing and collaboration that will help fill these gaps. I'm happy to say that this funding has already helped us fund some new programs in rural remote areas. One example is the Catalodici First Nation community in the Northwest Territories. The goal is to establish a culturally safe group for women where participants can build on their strengths and heal from trauma and addiction. Through training and mentorship, this project also aims to build the capacity of women in the community support, to support other women who have also experienced trauma. Another example is the Common Wheel Community Arts Program, where veteran artist Michelle McCasey is helping develop, develop a program to empower Indigenous girls and women against sexualized violence. She will work alongside local Northern elders and knowledge keepers to envision a program that is sensitive and relevant to the issues at hand. To further extend the reach of this project, Common Wheel hopes to partner with the Provincial Association of Transition Houses and Services in Saskatchewan, an organization that we also know and love well. Here at the foundation, we are constantly reminded that the need for, this project, for these projects is critical and urgent. So we're very grateful to have the opportunity to steward these funds, leverage these funds, and advance our vision of a Canada where gender equity is realized for all women and girls. We will continue to work tirelessly toward that vision, and we're ha very happy to have you along with us for this journey. And now I'm going to hand it over to Andrea Gundraj, our Vice President of uh, Public Engagement. Do I have to take over for you? No, I don't think so. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, folks, I'm here to do just a bit of a Q&A. I'm just going to move the pulpit over. 
Um, so we had a couple of questions that came on online ahead of time, and we want to make sure that we address your questions. And of course, if you have any other questions after this, you can talk to me, talk to my colleagues here, and we'll do our best to answer them. There were two questions that came online. Um, first one, how can we most effectively support Many Women's Foundation in the campaign for a gender equal Canada? I know sometimes these things can feel very big and they can feel very overwhelming, so this is a great question for us. This is really what Join the Tire List was about. It's about making these big, difficult things into actions that everybody can take. There are three things on jointhetirelist.ca that we're asking people to do, and I want to encourage you to just do them. You can do them today. They're that easy. First thing, sign up to get emails from us. These emails give you more information about actions that come up along the way that you can take and what's happening in gender equality, especially that kind of big, high level, what's going on in the national sphere. So I would encourage you all, if you haven't already, sign up so that you can get that information. Also, give a donation. <laughs> the foundation, of course, really relies on donors and people who give any amount of money towards the work that we do. Our role is to support the incredible grassroots organizations doing this stuff in community, and we gotta get those funds to them. They rely on us, and that's our job. So any amount that you can give, we encourage you, if you can do a monthly, even monthly for $10 a month, Think about that in terms of how many coffees you can kind of cheap out on over the month and then you can give towards that. That is a really helpful amount to give to the organizations that we support. The third thing that I would encourage you to do online on jointhetarlist.ca, you will see the ability to sign a petition. This petition focuses on supporting a national action plan on gender-based violence. This is something that advocates have been saying for years we needed to happen. Finally, Finally, we have a promise from the government to get that going. The issue is, of course, that we have to show that there's public support for this. So it's not just advocates, it's not just people in an esoteric sector. It's everybody wants this because we have to invest in it properly. We have to make sure that all the voices that are underheard are part of the planning process. And we have to make sure that it's expedited with good investment behind it, not 10 million, not 20 million, good investment, because we know people are waiting up to a year even to get sexual assault services after rapes. So we have to remember that the need is so big, the awareness is increasing, the need then increases. We need to get this investment going and we need to show that everybody in Canada is behind this and you can't cheap out on it, we have to do it right. Those are the three things you can do today. And then for what can we do on International Women's Day? That's coming up soon. International Women's Day this year falls on a Sunday. Sunday is a great British day. So <laughs> we're encouraging people to have an International Women's Day brunch. Get your family, your friends, your loved one, your girls together, do a brunch, collect donations from folks, give those donations to the Canadian Women's Foundation. So go right to the people that we're serving across the country who are doing this work. And take the opportunity to talk about one or two topics on gender equality. I'm going to have this with my girlfriends. My girlfriends don't know this stuff very much. They know the lived experience of what it means to feel unsafe sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. What it means to feel that you have to guard your back when you can't go on public transit without getting harassed, they know that. So we're gonna talk about that as a group and segue into speaking about things like the National Action Plan. That's my personal plan. What is your plan? Do an IWD brunch and support the Canadian Women's Foundation and get that conversation going with your friends and family. It makes a difference and we need folks having these conversations continually to get things done. The second question that came online, what is the plan to increase volunteering opportunities in terms of coaching for women? We get this all the time. People are really passionate about coaching and volunteering in their communities. They're very passionate about wanting to give their expertise to other women. We see this, and that's a lovely thing. One of the things that we're doing right now, we're in a partnership with the Canadian Mentor, Mentorship Canadian Mentoring Partnership, I keep messing that up, is a coalition of organizations that are working to strengthen mentorship opportunities across the country. And this coalition is exploring how technology tools can be used to hook people up with mentorship opportunities. I think this is pretty brilliant because, you know, Canada is this big land mass and getting people together is always a, a struggle, right? We heard about what that's like in a rural and remote 
context. I think that's an issue everywhere because isolation shows up in many different ways in communities. So this technology tool will be available, we anticipate, within six months or a year from now. In the meantime, if you are looking to become a mentor or if you're looking to find mentorship opportunities, I'd encourage you to go to volunteer.ca. This is Canadian-based volunteering kind of hub where you can find volunteer centers in your communities that will allow you to hook up with organizations looking for things like volunteers who are going to be mentors or who are going to support programs in their communities. So go there if you want something right, right away. There's opportunities in every community right now. And I think mentors are kind of the, the trend now. We're thinking about how we can support one another just on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so that's all the questions that we had online. If you have any additional questions, let me know. Otherwise, <laughs> what's, what's the next thing on the agenda, which I don't have here? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> I, I think I'm supposed to say thank you. Okay. <laughs> so basically, thank you all for coming. Um, there. The, the... <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what it is. Thank you for being one of the panelists. <laughs> but really, um, a, a very special thanks from us to uh, accept the invitation to be here to support this work. Um, I, I'm, I'm really moved by the turnout this evening. AGM is not the most exciting, sexy topic there is, um, an event, but the fact that you're here um, says a lot to us and we truly appreciate that. I want to thank Michelle and Emma and Alina for making, uh, making all the arrangements to make this happen, happen, pulling it together. We're not used to... Want to continue this in the future as we tried last year and then the storm came and blew everything up. <laughs> but uh, we want to continue this in the future so that we can have an opportunity to gather and hear what we're doing. And you can talk to us and tell us what you think we should be doing as well. Okay, so thanks for coming and please mingle and have something to eat, have a drink, etc. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>